campaign. Well, let's now talk to the former Labour Chancellor, Alistair Darling, the head of the anti-independence Better Together campaign. He joins us from Edinburgh. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's start first of all then on those claims from Alex Salmond that uh, the Scottish people will not take kindly to what he is calling bullying from out-of-touch politicians in Westminster. Well, I don't think uh, people in Scotland will take kindly to somebody who is not prepared to tell us what his plan B is, what currency we would have uh, to replace the pound. You know, he was speaking today as if last week had never happened, which is you know, rather typical of him. And if you look at the central thrust of what he was arguing, he said that if Scotland decides to separate from the rest of the UK and there is a border where there is none today, there will be additional costs to businesses on, in Scotland and the rest of the country. And yes, that of course, is, that is a consequence of independence. But isn't the obvious thing to do if you want to avoid that difficulty is to vote against independence in the first place. What he's saying is his plans will cause immense costs and difficulties for businesses. Uh, then he wants to create something entirely different, which is unacceptable uh, and bad, actually, for both countries, in order to dig him out of the hole that he's, uh, that he's climbed into. So his argument is nonsensical. It is a complete contradiction in terms. If you want to avoid the additional costs for businesses in Scotland and in the rest of the UK, do not vote for separation. The United Kingdom and the pound actually reduces those and creates jobs and opportunities. Opportunities. So the difficulties he's pointing out are entirely of his own making. But that's if you believe currency union is absolutely unworkable. He believes it is workable. Well, look, look he'd say anything uh, to get him out of a hole. Remember, this is a man who said that sterling was a millstone around Scotland's neck uh, when he was in favour of the euro. But for a currency union to work, you need firstly to have a banking union, and that means that the rest of the UK would have to underwrite Scotland's banking uh, system, which is 12 times Scotland's GDP. You also, to make it work, as Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, said a couple of weeks ago, you need to be able to transfer money in the event of any shocks to the system, like a drop in the oil price. And of course, the other thing you've got to do is both Scotland and the rest of the UK, by then, with independence, two foreign countries, would actually have to agree each other's budgets. Now, you don't have to imagine any of this. This is the problem that the Eurozone is facing even as we speak. And they, they even they are finding it difficult to sell these points to, to, to people who are actually in a currency union already. And it isn't surprising when you look at what a currency union actually means, the hard-headed economic analysis of it, never mind the politics of it, that the rest of the UK is not going, not, 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 doesn't want to sign up to it. And actually, if you want to look at the politics of it, and look at there was a poll conducted over the last couple of days which shows overwhelmingly the rest of the UK aren't prepared to buy it. And I come back to the point. If you want to avoid all the disruption to business, the additional costs and everything else, do not vote for independence. It is Alex Salmon's in obsession with independence that's causing this problem in the first place. Uh, and the best way to avoid it is to stay in the UK with the pound. Uh, the yes vote is, is improving though, isn't it? The well, it's, ICM look, poll for Scotland on Sunday showed a 5% swing towards the yes camp. The, 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 the gap narrowing with 37% of voters now saying they'd vote yes, 44% no. You know, if I may, you've got a very selective view of opinion polls. The ICM poll came out, what, five, six weeks ago? There's been three or four since then, and the most recent one from uh, one of the pollsters the nationalists seek to uh, cite most often shows a 2% swing to us and 2% away from then. So if you're going to look at opinion polls, don't just to pick one of them. Uh, look at what the trend, and actually the trend shows that things have barely moved since uh, they published their white paper last November. But don't just fall for one opinion poll, which they, uh, you know, they shove in front of people. There are others you need to look at. It was, it was, a, it was say, a couple of weeks ago, that poll, and I mean, obviously I hear, hear what you're saying well, about the fact one, that there, it, are, there are lots the, of, there are always the, lots of no, polls. It wasn't to actually. The, it's four weeks since the one you referred to. There have been about three or four since then. Now, you know, I, I'm not blaming you. Someone's put that in front of you, and, and I'm certainly not complacent. I've always said I thought this was going to be much closer than people think. But what I do think is in the last few days, uh, both in respect of Europe and in respect of the pound, which are the key things that will determine Scotland's prosperity in the future, the wheels are coming off the nationalist uh, wagon. They are in a mess. They're all over the place. And actually, it's not just me saying that. The former deputy leader of the SNP, John, uh, um, Jim Sillers, has described Alec uh, Salmon's proposal for a currency union as, and I quote, nonsense on stilts. And members
members of the Yes campaign, that's the SNP campaign, uh, you know, in, in, in favour of, in, of independence, they're at odds with each other and they're looking at different alternatives the, the, this, and so on. So it's not just the, me saying this. The, the, this is, this is debate, something that's widely held. The debate is inevitably now getting bogged down in very technical language, which it has to because there are very serious issues at stake, currency, membership of the European Union. But you've got to wonder what ordinary voters hear when they hear this sort of language. Does, is, is it cutting through? Is it edifying? Well, Alec, Alex Salmon says it's not a positive campaign, it's a negative campaign. Well, look, in relation to currency, all the evidence is that it is cutting through. When you think about it, the pound that you have in your wallet or your purse, how much it can buy, what it's worth, does actually mean, mean something to people. Equally, what are you, suppose we had to have a new currency or, 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 or we, you know, we, we joined the euro. People would want to know if they got money in the bank, well, how much is it going to be worth tomorrow? Equally, what's it going to cost them in terms of mortgages or in other loans that they've got if you had a brand new currency? And remember, Salmond again today is threatening to default on Scotland share of debt, a reckless action on, on, any, on any view of things. If we started our, our new currency with the first minister of the country saying, I'm the sort of guy who will default on my debts if I don't get my own way, what would that money actually be worth in people's bank accounts? So when you say it's technical, <laughs> it's not. It's a this practical thing. You know, what, the value of the pound in your wallet or your purse actually matters to people. And similarly, you know, I'm not pretending that Europe excites people, but I think people know enough about Europe to know that an awful lot of jobs depend depend upon it. And when the, commission of the, of the, the, the President of the Commission of the European uh, Union says that this is going to be you know, an uphill struggle, anyone who's had any d d experience of dealing with Europe knows that nothing is straightforward in Europe and certainly nothing is sorted out quickly in my experience. Alistair Darling, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you us. very much indeed. Thank you. Let's go to